This book. This book. So good. So good. I feel like reading this book was literally me going through my own curse of having to learn how good the book was and, you know, the give and take. The give and take of the story in order to break the curse and finish the book. So it's in my top three. Did that make any sense? Did you get it? It made sense in my head where like the beast has to learn to love or like receive true love and love in return. Whereas I went into this book not 100% excited, which historically, I mean, yes, we all know, at least you might know at this point that I'm like, Sleeping Beauty has been my favorite for now questionable reasons, because I still love Prince Philip and the Three Fairies, but I have learned so much in alternate universes of them that I'm like, why do I like them? Beauty and the Beast is another one of my favorite Disney movies, as well as like, if we're talking about which, which princesses I relate to, like of the newer ones, Merida and Rapunzel. But Belle has always been up there, mostly because we got brown hair. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, that is a large part of the reason because I was like, if I ever have to cosplay one of the Disney princesses, I have to do Belle because I don't, I'm not a wig person, so uh, this is what I got. But yes, I do love books, obviously. We're reading and talking about books. Do I want all the books? Not necessarily. Some places we divert. That's fine. There are things Belle does. She's a go-getter. She realizes herself some of her uh, go get em attitude is actually impulsiveness that can cause problems and did cause problems. So I get that. I try not to be impulsive. Let's rewind, because I feel like we're just gonna brain dump if I don't. Let's rewind, read the synopsis, which is on the back, since this is one of the the first three, they had them all in paperbacks, which like they, did they ever make hardcovers of these? I mean, at this point, I don't care. But if you're a collectionist, having just the first three, four-ish as paperback is annoying. But enough of that, let me, read the synopsis to you guys so we can more or less deep dive into my experience rereading As Old As Time. As Old As Time. What if Belle's mother cursed the beast? Belle is a lot of things. Smart, resourceful, restless. She longs to escape her poor provincial town for good. She wants to explore the world. Despite her father's reluctance to leave their little cottage in case Belle's mother returns, a mother she barely remembers. Belle also happens to be the captive of a terrifying, angry beast. And that is her primary concern. But when Belle touches the beast's enchanted rose, intriguing images flood her mind. Images of the mother she believed she would never see again. Stranger still, she sees that her mother is none other than the beautiful enchantress who cursed the beast, his castle, and all its inhabitants. Shocked and confused, Belle and the Beast must work together to unravel a dark mystery about their families that is 21 years in the making. I don't know if I like the synopsis. I, like, it just, I feel like it didn't hit the points it could have. Um, like, usually we don't talk about the synopsis because we just read it and we're like, oh, it took forever. <laughs> but I just feel like it's presentation of like, she wants to explore, even though her father doesn't want to leave because they're waiting for her mother to return. And she's also the captive of the beast. And that's her primary concern. So like, how would I, have, I, I mean, I am not the person to word synopses. Y'all have seen me struggle. We struggle bus with synopses. Not to say it's giving more away since the one liner is literally what if Belle's mother cursed the beast. But in the first, part of the book. So about the first third, we do have alternating POVs between Belle in the present and um, essentially Maurice and her mother in the past as things come to uh, fruition, aka the curse. And 
initially I didn't like the pacing of it because it, it felt very disjointed. I don't know how it would have felt if we had like part one be everything in the past because it did come to a good spot where you could just be like, and now here's Belle now with Maurice. He, they don't remember anything. I feel like that still could have worked out. We didn't have to jump back and forth as much. And this is fr coming from somebody who in Tower of Dogs, it's dual POV. So we are literally alternating between the brother and sister POV. And in Kuro Kenshin, it wasn't like every other chapter, but there was present storyline would alternate with the past storyline. So like, yes, I do this. I've done this. I like it in most cases, but it did feel a little bit disjointed. And I hate that I'm sounding already critical when I really loved this book, but it's a review. So we're gonna talk about everything. So yeah, it wasn't a terribly huge fan of the pacing in part one because of that. I think I got over it after about 50 pages or so, but um, I do remember while reading it kind of being like, not confused, obviously, because it's very clear what time period you're in, but I, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it right away. Anyway, moving on, I feel like when she saw the first image of her mother, she didn't know it was her mother. And the way that this, it says, images of the mother she believed she would never see again, it feels like, oh, she knew it was her mother or whatever. I don't know. Don't ask me about synopses. We will learn about those later. But I just think it, there is such a heavy mystery vibe in this book. Um, it's very gothic in its feel because it's very eerie, very dark, uh, especially throughout Belle's internment at the castle. At least before she's kind of like, getting along with all the servants and proactively working to figure out how to solve the curse. So to walk through the timeline generally without giving you like all the details away because I want you to read it. I really want you to read it and experience it. I don't know if you if you want to listen to the audiobook. Okay, I think that's what I did the first time. And I don't know if it was the narrator. I don't know if it was just what I was doing when I was listening to it, but it didn't connect with me as well in the audiobook. Whereas I was not hanging on every word while reading it, but I I could feel the book more while reading it. Do with that as you will. So in the first part, we're jumping between the POVs of Maurice and Rosalind, 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 who is Belle's mother how they met um, essentially back way back when the kingdom where the beast castle is was actually a sort of sanctuary, a refuge area where les charmants, which are magical beings could live peacefully, peacefully, peacefully and uh, be themselves. Like it was a safe haven for them for a long time until like the most recent king and queen, which are the princes, the beasts, parents, um, until their reign where things started to change and uh, they weren't as welcome anymore. So apparently there was an incident, sit you right there, cause I'm gonna wave you around if I don't stay. So there was an incident prior to Maurice and Rosalind meeting where a a natural, so an unmagic young man. I knew it was gonna fall. I knew she was gonna fall. Lean back the other way, lean back the other way, stop. A natural young boy and a magical young boy were fighting over a girl. The magical young boy, electric shocked, used magic and um, in their fight, their duel killed the non-magical boy. So that already caused tension between the naturals and the Le Char the Charbon. So there was already tension, but it was still like, this is where everybody's living because the rest of Europe is already like killing them off, etc. So now that kingdom is no longer safe because the king and queen are like, they have more power than us, like quite physically. So they could do something. Obviously they, there's nothing stopping them from getting out of control and murdering somebody. So they were kind of like, oh, if they go missing, that's better for us. Rosalind kind of stepped up as a 
proactive, revolutionary sort of person. Of course, all the good words. Just boo -boo -boo -boo. So she went to the king and queen and was like, hey, my people are missing. You guys need to figure out what to do about that. And that's when the king and queen were literally like, no, we're, we're all for you guys getting out of our kingdom because you're a threat. So they didn't help her. Not long after, the plague starts coming in. Maurice and Rosalind and Baby Belle, who was born during all this turmoil, moved to a quieter village where like everybody's basic. They're like farmers and they don't know what's going on. So they like kind of hide themselves over there because a lot of people have not only been missing, but trying to escape. And while they were over there, she, as the enchantress Rosalind, got called back to the king and queen because they were like, hey, can you get rid of this plague for us? And she's like, no. One, all of the people who were like doctor level, like with potions and things that could help people, you've gotten rid of or sent away or have gone missing. Um, and also because it's it's the plague, like it's a virus. She's like, my magic can't make it go away. But also I'm not gonna help you. So that's her second meeting with the king and queen or like at the palace. Things obviously go south from there. More people go missing and the king and queen do end up dying from the plague. The prince and everybody, like all the children that were in the palace were protected because Rosalind was at least like kind and motherly enough to put a, an enchantment to protect them from getting sick. And now the prince as a 10, 11 year old is lined up to be the next king. So for, right before his coronation, Rosalind goes to see him as the enchantress, disguising herself as an ugly old woman and offering him the rose, which we know he rejects. And he's like, man, you're ugly, man. Her more or less impulsive reaction to that was, you're gonna turn out just like your parents. So I'm gonna curse you and you're gonna turn into ugly beast that you actually are, unless you can learn to love somebody, et cetera, et cetera. We know the curse, right? Fast forward. I'm pretty sure we start off, Belle's been ambushed with the wedding by Gaston and she's like, I ain't gonna marry him. My father has gone to the fair. So of course they would choose this time, but look, Philippe is coming back and Papa's not with him. So she goes, she finds her father in the castle, imprisoned by the beast, does the swap. So now she's the beast prisoner instead of her father. Speaking of things going south, let's go even further south. Let's just start digging the hole to China because it goes, uh, it goes bad real quick. She, when she goes into the West Wing and investigates the Enchanted Rose, she touches it and it immediately like disintegrates. Like fast forwarding to the end of the curse where like they're trapped. And of course she feels guilty from that, but now it's also triggering images in like the mirrors and reflective surfaces that Belle sees. And slowly she's, I guess she does, does she? She does kind of see in the vision when she touches the rose that it was her mother. Like she makes that connection that it was her mother. So I guess the synopsis was correct. Still, I think we could have presented it better. So she's like, hey, sorry I did that. Also, my mom was the one who cursed you. So also sorry about that. I try to make better. It's, I mean, she's more or less trapped in there because the castle starts being covered by these very like icy webs. Not necessarily, that she wants to help the beast at this point, but she realizes the servants were actually people before they were turned into inanimate objects. If I could talk now. And she gets these visions of like her mother being in trouble, being tortured. So we've got this whole mystery unraveling. Like even there's a mystery going on with Mrs. Potts' husband, which is like actually a huge, a huge thing which was one of the elements that like that were, I guess, added into the story that I really loved, even though it was like heart wrenching. So back in the old days, Maurice was buddies with Alaric Potts, who marries Mrs. Potts later. Their third friend was Frederick or Frederic, last name Dark, as in Monsieur Dark, the bad skinny asylum guy from the movie. He's in here too. So they're all buddy chum chums, right? When all of the Charmants were escaping 
the, the kingdom, Alaric was actually helping them out until he went missing. And he wasn't a Charmant. He was natural. He, so he was powerless, right? So it was very odd that he went missing because like he was not the person who run away. He, there was just no sign of him. They find him. They find out what happens to him and it is tragic. This scene, the fact that he was he was offed and they knew it had to be someone close to him plus the imagery and just the feel of the whole scene like this it was the cement that put this book in top three for me because a lot of times with the twisted tales i'm like you didn't really go dark which you don't have to go dark you're just twisting the story a bit it went dark and it was nice the mystery surrounding what happened to him connected not only to things in the past but to things going on in the present they weren't aware of which helped them find Belle's mother, break the curse, sort of. It was not a happily ever after. It was a like happy for some people <laughs> adventure continues sort of situation which I actually did appreciate because while I can agree with the the notion of like I don't want to be sad at the end of a book like I do want things to go well the fact that we didn't just get the curse fully broken and, you know, the movie version where we get to dance with the prince and all as well was a, a cathartic level of satisfying. Um, it felt very realistic as well as just the, the growth between Belle and the Beast and their formative relationship. I, I just really appreciated those parts of it. And it felt, like I said, it felt real to me and... Not that I'm asking for a sequel. I We don't need to go into a sequel to figure out how and what they do after that. But I'm glad that it wasn't just wrapped up with a pretty bow and done. I actually appreciated that. So, you. Definitely in top three. Oh, another thing. Because I'm thinking of why is it not beating out on birthday yet. Throughout the book, there were a lot of French words slash phrases kind of thrown in. Obviously Beauty and the Beast takes place in France. When Lumiere like addresses people with like mon ami, uh, ma chérie, whatever, it makes sense because it's kind of like the title, you know, the, the title to address that person. The parts that bothered me would be where they, they're pretty much saying everything else in English and they either repeat part of it in French or they like add on the French part. Like when, uh, I can't do that. That's going to spoil it. Um, when Belle goes into the library for the first time and she sees it, the first thing she says is, Oh, mon Dieu. Oh my God. Right. Goes through the paragraph description, like a page worth. And then she just says, Oh my God. And I'm like, when, yeah, Blah. you're going to use the French. Don't also use the English. Like that's how I feel is like, you don't have to use both. If you're going to use that phrase, especially more or less back to back. Lumiere stuff in addressing using like that sort of title makes sense to me, but having the same phrase used in French and English, I don't think you needed to. It took me out of the story more than being like, oh yeah, we're in France. The French food though, that sounded really good. Highly recommend physically reading the book. I think because it does have the mystery elements, it's nice to take your time and kind of have the voices in your head and go through it. If you want to do the audiobook, go for it. I just could not. I started it as the audiobook, realized it was the same narrator, and I guess that's given me trauma. Unfortunately. I'm sorry, dude. Nothing against you, but I don't know. It just didn't... Mm -mm. Uh, check out As Old As Time. If you've already read it, let me know what your favorite parts were in the comments below. Like, the parts that were like, oof. Like I said, what happened to Mr. Potts? I don't want to spoil that because you have to... It's, it's a visceral experience. You gotta read it. So, so, so good. I know I ranked this lower in my initial ranking, probably because I didn't connect to it as much. I am connected and I am invested. And I was actually a little bit sad to leave this world when the book was over. Which is a thing. It's a thing I was not aware of. It's, it doesn't happen too often. It happened. So definitely in my top three. I don't know if it's beating on birthday. I feel like I had a few more things in here that I was like, but, but we still have two more books to read. 
the last two books I need to reread and they'll be coming out with their reviews in the next couple weeks are Part of Your World and Straight On Till Morning. I know I really liked the story the first time I went through it, so I would have decently high expectations. This one, I think I didn't connect to it as well through the audiobook, so I want to physically read it if I can. Whereas this one, I feel like the way that the story went, I could comfortably audiobook it and or like dual audiobook physically read it and I'll be okay. But we'll see. So I'm going to go into this one next. And which is ironic because I'm also listening to the villains, uh, not trilogy, the villains series by Serena Valentino. And oddly enough, I am in book three because I had that I finally got the audiobook from the library, but you don't, you don't care. And book three is Poor Unfortunate Souls about Ursula. So it's, it's ironic. It's so ironic. Oh yeah, I did change my shirt. I changed my shirt because we're talking about being the beast even though you didn't get to see it the whole video but yeah two more to go super excited about that and once i finish poor unfortunate souls i will jump into part of your world so i can get that out in a timely manner if you guys have any questions or comments like i said leave them below i know uh sometimes i totally forget to touch on things because we're just brain dumping but that's how these work so yeah, I will see you guys in the next review, which should be part of your world. Have a great one. Read some books and um, don't get cursed. Don't do it. Just be nice to the old lady. Don't, 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 don't.